Friends, it is high time for us to put aside the people movers and start focusing on cars that get us incredibly excited, sports cars. Now, while you and I have been looking at practicality, there have been a lot of changes in one of my favorite derivations of 911, the Targa. So you and I need to spend some time going over a high-level tech review as well as some show updates. Okay, so you guys need to belt in and pay attention because we have a lot to cover. This, well, this is the 911 Targa 4. This is, if there is such a thing, a base 911 Targa, and this is the world premiere of it. And the reason why this is the world premiere, because I know you're thinking, well, it looks just like the 911 Targa from last year. Well, there's a lot of differences because Porsche, if you've been following them recently, they've had a huge, like, division of church and state. Previously, a 3.4 or a 3.8 liter flat six back there that's normally aspirated. Now, 911s, they're doing a twin turbo, so effectively a smaller block, three liters, and they're strapping two turbos to them. So what does that come out net-net? Well, this is 370 horsepower in this base car and 331 pound-feet of torque. But what's really interesting about that, that torque comes in at 1,700 RPM. Now, you and I talk about this in many episodes, but this is very unique because of the configuration of this engine. It is a flat six. Generally, torque, you have to pull them out at very high RPMs. This is as low as 1,700, which is kind of incredible. Anyway, let's put that aside. There are some other changes. Suspension pieces. So this is a different engine, right? You're basically getting a smaller block, which is lighter, right? Well, you're adding more plumbing, you're adding turbochargers, so the weight actually increases. The car itself overall is about 100 pounds more. That's not totally the engine. So basically, you have more weight here, even though you've got a smaller block. So what they've done is they've put stiffer or bigger springs in the rear. But it's not just hardware. There's also a software change. So previously, we've talked about passive in all these different Porsches we've driven, and they've generally been optional. Here, it's fitted as standard. Now, this is the base car. There is still one more we have to get to. Now, we press on to, like, the big bad daddy of the 911 Targa world. And what this is, is the 911 Targa 4S. And just for the avoidance of doubt, uh, Porsche has chosen the LA Auto Show to do the world premiere of the Targa version of the updated 911, basically the front, the rear, and that new engine we talked about. So how is this one different? Well, they do a bit of surgery. They take that three liter engine out of the base car and they take the turbos off. Then they take the impellers out of that turbo. They go and find bigger impellers, put them in the turbocharger. Then they put the turbochargers back on and that gets you 420 horsepower, but 368 pound-feet of torque. And that comes in at, again, a very low 1700 RPM. Now, there are a couple of other changes. Now, remember, we talked about the suspension changes over on the base car, that all transfers here as well. Because remember, you've got the heavier engine, so you got the stiffer and bigger springs in the rear. You also get the standard pass in here. But notice the brakes. So these are the carbon ceramics, and yes, before you ask, they are optional. But what's different here, these carbon ceramics are the carbon ceramics that come from the turbo. And actually, I guess I am a little bit confused because is this now still the non-turbo Porsche or is it the non-turbo turbo Porsche? We need to cover this in another episode. Anyway, I digress. Um, there is another big change here. So you and I have talked about the sport exhaust and all the different uh, Porsches, the Boxsters, the 911s we have driven, and that is optional. And here it is optional as well. It's optional both on the 4 as well as the 4S. But visually, there is a huge change. Like if you look at the base car, the Targa 4, that one has the regular exhaust, which has the tips out to the side. What they've done here is they've taken the sport exhaust, moved the tips into the center, so like an old race car kind of thing, and they're like bigger tips, and that comes fitted as standard when you do the optional sport exhaust. Follow me on this? Now, this is what, 2015, and I think they're calling this a 16 or a 17, whatever model year. So of course, you gotta make some telematics and infotainment changes. So believe it or not, this is a Porsche that now has Apple CarPlay. So basically, Cupertino and Steve Jobs are now in the front of a 911. But you know what, let's put aside all that stuff. Let's put aside the changes, let's put aside the tech. There are still two other Porsches you and I need to look at before we press on from the LA Auto Show. 
So as it turns out, the 911 Targa 4 and Targa 4S are not the only world premieres here in the California Republic. Friends, the Cayman GT4 Club Sport. So the obvious, this is a track only car. Um, but there are a couple of other changes in the transition from road going Cayman GT4 to this. So you know that argument you get into your friend when they go and they buy an automated manual version of a car where they could have had a manual. They say, oh, but it shifts so much faster, but they never really go on track days. So that is really a moot point. Well, this is a track car and the PDK does shift faster. So you get any transmission you want as long as it's the PDK. Um, then there's the engine. So the engine over in the Cayman GT4, 385 horsepower out of 3.8 liter flat six and 309 pound-feet of torque that comes in at 4,750 RPM. But this, this is a hundred pounds lighter than the streetcar, basically all the interior. You still have like the switch gear, like the, the HVAC switch gear and the power window stuff, but the rest of it is all metal. And I just kind of love it. So we've covered Apple CarPlay. That leaves just one more thing. The Porsche Boxster Spider. But we're not gonna talk about this today. Why? Because you and I are gonna drive this car in about two, maybe three weeks. We're gonna have a full tech review as well as a first drive review episode. And I'm not gonna tell you where we're gonna drive it. Let's just say somewhere, I would say almost perfect for this type of car. But short of a 911 GT3 RS Targa with a manual transmission, that is about all the Porsches I am going to show you today. Now we started out this journey with me admitting to you that this is, well, one of my favorite derivations of 911. Uh, and really these things are kind of like Baskin Robbins, it's like 31 flavors. Uh, and I know if I were to get one, this is probably the one I would have, obviously, with the manual transmission. Well, that's until Porsche builds the 911 GT3 RS Targa with manual transmission, hint, hint, hint. But what derivation of 911 is your favorite? And it could be one that is built today or one like my perfect 911 that is probably never going to be built. Let me know what you would want, but also let me know are you a current 911 owner and what region of the world you live in and obviously what 911 you drive? Let me know in the comments below or via our social media, Moto Man TV on Word, Moto Man TV on Word, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And with that, I want to leave you with two things. Number one, this is our last full episode from the 2015 LA Auto Show, but we do have some social bits that we put up some shorts on our Facebook page and we'll do that over the next couple of days. So make sure you check out our Facebook page and like our Facebook page because we do put a lot of clips that don't make it to these full episodes on the Facebook page and we do it pretty much every day. And then number two, you should definitely download our brand new fancy mobile app from Apple iTunes and Google Play. And until we see you in that very special place driving that stunning Boxster Spider, Bishbeta. <laughs>